Hi, I'm Michael from Logitech Telematics. So welcome to our installation video, which aims to simplify for you the installation as much as possible. And I believe you will reach the goal. So these are the products we are going to install today. Basic package, wireless gas scale, wireless security sensor for windows and doors, keyless go-kart, siren, optional fresh water tank wiring for shout electro blocks and controlling shout wiring for CSV electro block. So let's see what's inside the package. And on the top you can find an onboard unit. Under the unit there is an installation diagram, plastic SIM card and under this insert you can find all the wirings you need to interconnect uh, the unit with your RV. So now let's see the content of the basic package in detail. This is the onboard unit, the brain of the entire system. This is the plastic SIM card with ICCID number. You will need this number later on to activate our premium services. And this is the temperature sensor for outdoor use. This is the lightning control wiring, IO wiring, uh, alarm inputs wiring, the most important wiring of the whole package is uh, power wiring. This is the wiring for LD3010 or 3020 panels, uh, which are not INET ready. This is the wiring for Truma INET ready panels or LD3020 INET ready panels. And these are the antennas we use uh, in our system. This is the GNSS antenna. Thanks to this antenna, you can acquire precise position of your RV. This is the communication antenna for 2G or narrowband or LTM networks. And this is ISM antenna. And thanks to this band, you can communicate with our wireless security accessories. So without further ado, let's get inside the installation. Before the installation itself, uh, let me explain to you particular wirings uh, of our system and their functions. So let's start with the power wiring. Uh, with the power wiring, you can power up the unit uh, via the red and black wires, as usual for the, for the automotive 12 volt systems. You can find it on the connector siren output uh, for the security, air exchanger output. If you have any roof fan, for example, you can connect it as well. Uh, there is also a heater output and pump output, uh, so you can control via the app. Uh, the functions like a, like a heater for the for example floor heating system or you can control the pump uh, it works like this the, all of the voltage comes first in from the battery from the positive pole and uh, it leads uh, out of the unit uh, and it's controlled via the software so it works like a bypass system let's say now let's talk a bit about alarm inputs uh, slash switches wiring so thanks to this wiring, you can connect to Kara Control individual alarm inputs, which have uh, individual behavior. So you can connect a smoke sensor, motion sensor, gas sensor or alarm sensor or third party alarm or a panic button. More about behavior of this uh, input you can find in our user manual. Those yellow ones are especially designed like a scanning inputs. Uh, you can interconnect them with factory switches if you have any in your, in your caravan or motorhome. And uh, this ensures the feedback for the application about the state of the switches. So if you switch uh, on and off uh, and a switch you have connected with these uh, inputs, uh, it appears uh, in the application and vice versa. The next wiring you can find in our system is uh, I.O. wiring. The I.O. wiring uh, ensures the analog communication between uh, our unit and your RV. And uh, on the connector you can find, uh, for example, input for uh, solar panel, uh, input for ignition or D+. Plus. Yeah, it's a signal from the from the key, from, from the cabin. If you start your engine, for example, it, the system can notify you about the open windows and doors uh, and so on. Uh, there is an output for electric lock, which uh, I will explain to you later on. 
and you can find, for example, auxiliary heating output in here. Uh, these auxiliary out one and two are reserved for, for future applications. And you can also find uh, 230 volts input on this connector and car battery or starting battery input. These uh, 230 volt input, uh, car battery input, and uh, these power supply state are the basic inputs uh, to interconnect uh, the system with a shout electro block, for example, or with any analog electro block. And these are usually connect uh, uh, via our uh, special wiring for electro blocks we offer on our website. Uh, in a way of a plug and play system if you want to connect uh, the car control uh, to the electro block which is supported by the system. Lightning control by link is designed to control uh, light channels uh, in your RV. Uh, don't be looking for any difficulties regarding this wiring uh, uh, or simply connect the output from your electro block or a dimmer unit uh, inside the connector and on the lower row of the connector you can find the outputs uh, of uh, our integrated dimmer of car control so if you lead uh, the signal inside uh, the car control uh, it can be controlled uh, on its output via the app uh, also if the unit fails or there's any problem with the unit and you have to disconnect the unit uh, for example in the case uh, of uh, claim and you have to use this terminator and uh, by simple connecting this terminator to to our uh, wiring uh, you have already installed in your caravan connected with lightning circuits uh, you can use your RV like before without car control installed and uh, this lightning control wiring is designed uh, for the current of maximum 6 amps so and it's designed for a 5 uh, lightning circuits so you can control 5 lightning circuits via this uh, via this uh, connector and uh, one is reserved for the awning light which has a special function and is split uh, in the application you can find a special button for it uh, because it's connected with the welcome home function and so on and uh, you will see this later later on in our training and uh, we also offer free amps uh, lightning control wiring which can be ordered as, as an option uh, if you have more than five uh, light channels in your rv now let's discuss uh, something about the truma heating system interconnection uh, so you can connect inet ready panels uh, directly to the car control uh, thanks to our wiring for true minute ready panels uh, via the special coupler we offer and you can connect the panel or the heating system uh, directly at the side of the panel or you can lead the, the wire directly to the heater is uh, this black one and in the same way it's connected to LD3020 iron ready panel so you use uh, the same the same wiring for this purpose and it can be also connected directly to the panel uh, thanks to our special coupler we provide you with or directly to the boiler for former LD3010 or 3020 panels without uh, iNet ready support uh, you have to use uh, our CCW006 or 008 uh, wiring and this is Thing. The car control system can also measure uh, water tanks of wastewater and fresh water in your RV. Uh, for this purpose uh, we have reserved uh, one Molex uh, connector right here with 10 pins and uh, this connector can read the data or the signal from up to two probes for, the, for the each, each uh, water tank. And uh, we offer optional wiring. Uh, this one is specially designed for a shout uh, panels. So you can simply interconnect the shout uh, Lumberg connector with our system and you can measure the level of the tank you have. Alternatively, you can also connect uh, the linear water probes because these are the step probes uh, when the measurement is done in four steps. We also support uh, three steps probes.
The car control system or the onboard unit is also equipped with five plugs, so let's say five interfaces ports. And uh, each of this uh, plug is reserved for, for the particular function or, or for the particular interface, uh, which is also shared. So you can find more interfaces uh, inside the unit, uh, and these are uh, connected uh, with these plugs. Uh, the, the first of the port is reserved for power supply. We say uh, we call this port power supply port. To this plug, you connect. Uh, all the wirings for specific electro blocks uh, um, we offer on our website, like optional wiring. Thanks to this uh, plug, you can easily control uh, your electro block uh, by simply uh, connecting the panel uh, to the wiring we provide you with and interconnect back to the car control unit. And you are getting the supported functions you can find on our websites for for each electro block uh, we support uh, different functions to measure the temperatures we use uh, external outdoor sensor for for uh, outside temperature just to be plugged right here and uh, for inside temperature we read uh, the temperature data from the panels only inet ready panels are supported there are many other connectors or interfaces on current control which are not uh, currently in use. Uh, for example, CAN bus or fuel LPG tank inputs uh, and uh, some serial lines and inputs we have uh, on our uh, connectors for interfaces. Uh, you can always find uh, the information which input or output is currently used in our hardware slash software interface table or in the app. The first step is to connect the power. So, easily disconnect the plus pole from the battery and attach a red wire, which is the voltage right here, and secure with the screw. I already did this um, before. And the same for the negative one. Once you have connection ready, just only plug the power wiring and switch the unit on. And you can see the power LED is flashing, so the unit is ready to be paired uh, with the app. I just removed all that 3020 panel, which is not INET ready. In this case, use the wiring CCW006 or 8 to interconnect it with our device. Simply plug the cable and Switch it on. And don't forget in the menu, in the settings, enable third party panel. So now the panel is ready to be paired with current control. In the case I have uh, ILD3020 panel, which is INET ready, I have to use uh, the Truma INET ready wiring, which I was talking about before. And in this case, you have to unplug the cable from the heater, which is usually a red one, but in this case, the producer decided to use the black one. So just use the coupler, which is the part of the package, and the side of the cable is marked like a trimmer panel. So use this side of the cable and simply plug it into the coupler. Now launch the car control app you have already downloaded from the App Store and pair with the unit so the pairing code will appear on the display. I'm just inserting the code and now I'm paired with the unit. And now let's connect the heating system. So just simply plug the cable into a heating port, like so. And in the settings menu, which is protected with the pin code, which is in default set to 0000, just choose the LD3010 or twenty. Once the pairing is done, I can switch by the tapping the thermostat button to the LD panel on, like so. And if I get into the menu after it boots, 
so you can see I can control the boiler and the temperature profiles. Now I'm gonna switch on the I Aldi uh, 3020 INET ready panel by simply touching the thermostat button and you can see the car control communicates directly with the panel. Now let's uh, prepare the wiring for the electro block. Uh, in the case uh, you use uh, our uh, wiring, uh, optional wiring we offer for uh, for sharp electro block. Uh, it's a little bit more of work, uh, so you have to prepare the I/O wiring, the alarm inputs wiring, uh, shout wiring, and power wiring. And what you will need are two Molex connectors because uh, we will use uh, the pins main switch, which is located on the power wire, uh, alarm input wiring, sorry, and uh, the extra. 230 volts input which is located uh, at IO wiring. So by simply plugging the pin inside the connector like so and here you complete the wiring to be to be ready for installation and don't forget uh, to connect the pump as you can see the colors uh, of the wires correspond to each other so in this case I suppose we will have, we will have not any problems to, to prepare this circuit so and now I'm ready to interconnect with the shout power supply now how to connect uh, shout electro block uh, to our car control unit at the side of the unit, uh, you have to simply plug the I/O wiring connector here, and uh, power switches connector here, and the last one, last step is to uh, plug the power supply port, which is the first from the left side, and finally, unplug the connector from the shout, plug it in into our coupler we provide for shot electro blocks and plug our cable here and you are all set once everything is connected uh, just go to the settings and set the power source to shout analog mode just save and now as you can see you can control your short electro block. You can see the status of the short power. You can read the voltage from the battery as well. And now let's uh, get into a war tanks connection. There are two possibilities how to connect to, uh, to the water probe. Uh, in the case of the already installed shout water probe, uh, the one way is to connect uh, directly to the wires of the water probe uh, by using the freeM scotch locks and and the special tool of course you can also use your own probe. the second possibility how to connect uh, the water probe to, to the shout panel you can use the wiring uh, which is specially designed uh, with the lumbar connector so just simply unplug the fresh water connector from the from the panel plug our optional wiring connector in here and plug the original cable into our coupler like so yeah and you are all set when you let the wiring via the furniture and your uh, microfit molex connector is fully pinned in for the fresh and wastewater probe just simply plug the connector inside the water probe port like so and now you are able to read the level of fresh and wastewater now something about the lighting circuits or lighting connection uh, for this purpose, uh, there are two connectors uh, with integrated dimmers in, in inside the correct control unit. Uh, one is for 6 amps of maximum and uh, the second one is for 3 amps. It's suitable for, for example, for LED uh, strips uh, under cupboards and, and so on. Uh, the connection is done always in the way that you have to connect uh, the lightning wiring directly behind the electro block or the dimmer unit. 
So now I will show you how to prepare the wiring. So I'll unpick the, the bag and uh, inside uh, the bag uh, you will find uh, a wiring, Molex uh, Minifit connector and terminator. I will explain the function of the terminator in the lightning circuits uh, later on. And now let's sort out the cables and uh, you will see on the label that uh, one wire is uh, marked with an uh, awning light. Uh, that is why that uh, one channel on the Molex Minifit connector is reserved for the awning. So, because it has a special function inside the application. And uh, now I have to prepare the first channel for the awning, which is reserved. So the upper row of the connector is always the input. So just plug it in. And for the output, I plug the connector with the pin under, under the first one. And now I'm ready to connect uh, all the circuits in this way. When you have allocated uh, dimmer unit, uh, then simply choose the channel you want to control. In this case, uh, I want to connect uh, the awning line channel. So simply plug out the fasting connector, put uh, the input of correct control lightning wiring inside here, and plug the output from the car control lightning wiring instead of the dimmer unit. And that's it. Once all the lightning channels are connected uh, with the dimmer unit or, or electrical block, uh, simply plug in the lightning uh, control wiring into the car control and you are ready to control the light channels via the app. In the case your caravan is equipped uh, with a dimmer unit, uh, you have first uh, to turn on your electrical block and turn on the channel you want to control and then you can control the particular channel via the app. If anything goes wrong uh, with your car control unit during the time you simply unplug all the circuits and the only uh, wiring has to be alright is the lightning control wiring so simply plug the terminator into it and everything works like before. You can also use the terminator to test the light uh, circuits uh, before you plug it in into the unit. One of the most essential part of the installation is placing of antennas. In this case uh, I will be showing you how to install or, or uh, stick uh, the 2G uh, narrowband antenna. So the most important thing is to find find the place which is not uh, uh, from the metal of the metal surface. So avoid all the metal surfaces and I'll stick it uh, on some wooden profile inside the interior and uh, just simply choose the place uh, where the antenna will not be so visible. So you have to find some compromise in this case and I decided to stick it right on this profile in the vertical position. So this is important for me. And that's it. The very important uh, is the placement of the GNSS antenna. Uh, you can see the small arrow aims on the top uh, which uh, marks the sky view. Uh, if your caravan is uh, made of GFK and there is no aluminium uh, roof, you can simply, or in this case I decided uh, to, to place the antenna on the top side of the car control unit, which will be subsequently installed like so. So the final step regarding antennas uh, is to connect uh, their RF connectors uh, onto the unit. So this one is reserved for a 2G slash narrowband antenna. Here you can simply push the connector of the GNSS antenna and the last one is ISM antenna. This antenna is adjustable so you can choose the angle regarding the installation of the unit. So that's it. And the pinup of the wiring installation is outdoor temperature sensor. I already let the sensor via the floor and now simply connect uh, 
the outside temperature sensor connector to the car control unit. Uh, regarding uh, inside temperature, this is acquired uh, directly from the iron ready panel, so you don't have to install an uh, inside temperature sensor anymore. Now let's install a security sensor onto a window. Uh, regarding security sensors installation, it's uh, always um, a bit uh, brain work, so to, you have to figure out uh, how to place the sensor and uh, think it through. Uh, in some cases uh, you have to improvise and uh, it's really up to you uh, to where you place the sensor and in this case I decided to use uh, uh, 3M Velcro so I will attach now I will stick uh, one part of the Velcro for for the magnetic contact here and yeah and stick uh, the opposite side of the tape or of the velcro to the magnet like so so i have installed the magnetic or the magnet which activate the this magnet activates the sensor and now when the sensor has already pulled out the insulation label so you can see the LED is flashing so it reacts uh, to the magnetic field so I have to at attach the sensor onto the, onto the window uh, so the sensor is already equipped with a 3M double side tape so The only thing you have to arrange for you it's a free and velcro if needed and uh, i place the magnet or the sensor in the position and now i can test if it works so if i open the window i can see the led on the sensor is flashing and all the connection works that's it Finally, I would like to show you how to replace the battery in the sensor. So let's see how we figure it out. You have to release the two, two screws and open the cover. And under the cover, you can find the electronics uh, with the battery. So you simply replace the battery and put it back. Now I'll be showing you how to alternatively uh, repair the sensor if you already uh, pull out uh, the insulation label of the battery you can take the magnet and put it onto the back side or the opposite side of the LED and wait until the LED will start flashing and now you can pair the sensor via the car control app what I connected in addition uh, to basic installation of the shower power supply, I connected the car battery voltage to see the status uh, of the starting battery and I connected ignition key to get the information about the ride. What I connected in addition uh, in regards to security, I connected a uh, gas sensor from Tetronic, like a third party alarm system. And I also connected uh, motion sensor from the entrance of the caravan. You can find it here. Also the siren is already connected and mounted uh, under the vehicle. Now how to pair the gas scale with the system. So I'm going to unbox uh, the scale. And what you have to do is to open the battery case. And you will find under the case, if you open it, uh, you will find an uh, insulation label right here. And simply pull out the label, and the process, the pairing process, will start automatically. And now connect with the car control, and inside the settings menu, uh, simple search for wireless devices. So perform scanning and the system will detect the gas pad for you and what you need to do now is to check the 
parameters of the casing of the gas bottle. So without further ado, let's get right into it. How to install the gas pad under the bottle? Yeah, you can simply put or place the bottle on the pad. You can also do that uh, inside the gas box or there are fixation holes so you can use the screws to screw or to fix uh, the pad uh, into the box or you can use also the VHB 3M double side tape and after replacing the bottle onto the pad you have to read the Tara and in the app uh, in the settings menu simply set the Tara for and choose from the list of the predefined casing we have for example composite 5 to 0.22 kilo and uh, adjust uh, the Tara in the gas settings menu and as you can see we've already installed these gas pads before inside the gas box so you can see how they are fit inside the box when the onboard unit is at its place uh, the last uh, step is to calibrate the accelerometer so go to the settings, open service settings menu, insert the pin code and uh, select the central usage placement. In this case, the unit is placed uh, in a horizontal position and the logo, October of the logo, aims to the left in a way over right. So this is the back of the RV, of the caravan, and this is the front of the caravan. So you have to choose the back horizontal from the menu, then tap calibrate accelerometer and save. Now you can see the inclination of the caravan for both of the sides. Now let's perform a test of the appliances which are connected uh, to our car control unit. As you can see, uh, the Bluetooth connection is running. Uh, I have also my unit registered into a network. Uh, the SIM card needs to be activated first, of course, and uh, the GNSS signal is also uh, required by the unit. Uh, first, uh, let's try to switch on the electro block, like so. Simply push the button and uh, you heard the relay. It's now switched on. And uh, now I will prepare the dimmer unit. I will turn it on and now I can control it where the application like so so you can see all the lights are lightning now and now let's say test the thermostat as you can see the only pen will turn on and in the dashboard uh, make a quick check of the statuses you have uh, in the upper part of the dashboard and also you can check the gas bottles and fresh and waste water. Now a quick security test. So I'm turning on the security mode. And if you have a motion sensor installed uh, in the entrance area, uh, only simply move the leg. And as you can hear, the siren turn on. And if you have gas sensor installed, uh, just simply use the surface cleaner to activate uh, the sensor and after that you will immediately receive a notification that gas is contaminated and if you have uh, also air exchanger installed it will turn on automatically for you so dear installers this is the end of our installation video if you have any further questions regarding installation don't hesitate to contact our support and thank you for watching stay tuned for more